one of the most unusual blood types. And it's the one blood type that is least likely to mutate or interact with other blood types. Dive into the mystery of type O blood, an ancient whisper in the veins of the America's indigenous peoples. This enigmatic marker, more than just a type, unveils a story of survival, adaptation, and deep-rooted connections to the land. What secrets does it hold? Blood Basics 101 Blood, the life force coursing through our veins, is as complex as it is vital. Its significance goes beyond the mere sustenance of life. It is a rich tapestry of history, genetics, and evolution. At the heart of this complexity lies the ABO blood group system, which classifies human blood into four main types, A, B, AB, and O. Each type is determined by the presence or absence of certain antigens on the surface of the red blood cells. Antigens are substances that the immune system can recognize and potentially react against. In the context of blood types, these antigens are proteins and carbohydrates that adorn the surface of red blood cells. Types A and B blood have A and B antigens, respectively. AB blood carries both, and type O, the enigma of our story, has neither. Type O blood is often referred to as the universal donor type. This label stems from its lack of A and B antigens, making it less likely to be rejected by the immune system of a recipient with a different blood type. This characteristic makes type O blood incredibly valuable in medical emergencies and transfusion scenarios, where the blood type of the recipient is unknown. But why does type O blood dominate in the indigenous populations of the Americas? The answer lies partly in the evolutionary advantages it may have conferred. Without the A or B antigens, type O blood presents a lower risk for certain diseases to take hold, offering a potential survival benefit. Moreover, some research suggests that Type O blood might be better adapted to ward off severe forms of illnesses such as malaria. Though the malaria theory is more relevant to the distribution of blood types in Africa than the Americas. The distribution of blood types across different populations is a fascinating study in human migration and adaptation. Globally, type O is the most common blood type, but its prevalence varies significantly from one geographic region to another. In the Americas, particularly among indigenous populations, the frequency of type O blood reaches remarkably high levels, suggesting a strong selection for this trait over millennia. The reasons for this selection are not entirely understood, but likely involve a combination of factors, including environmental challenges and the spread of diseases to which type O blood provided some resistance. The high-altitude theory, for example, posits that Type O blood's purportedly better oxygen delivery at high altitudes might have offered a significant advantage to ancient peoples living in the mountainous regions of the Americas. Tracing the Type O Trail The journey of Type O blood through the corridors of time and across the vast landscapes of the Americas is a saga steeped in mystery, resilience, and evolution. This chapter delves into the heart of the enigma. Tracing the historical and scientific breadcrumbs that reveal why type O blood courses so predominantly through the veins of indigenous populations across this diverse continent. The tale begins with the peopling of the Americas, a monumental migration story that unfolded over thousands of years. As the first humans crossed the Bering Land Bridge from Asia into the Americas during the last Ice Age, they brought with them the genetic blueprints that would shape the future bloodline of their descendants. Among these genetic traits was the Oalile, a silent harbinger of survival and adaptation. Scientific investigations into the blood type distributions among indigenous peoples have unearthed fascinating patterns. For instance, a landmark study in the 1980s among the Native American populations in Arizona unveiled a startling statistic. An overwhelming 99% of the individuals tested boasted type O blood. This striking prevalence is not an isolated phenomenon. It echoes throughout the indigenous communities from the snowy peaks of Canada to the lush rainforests of the Amazon. 
Why does type O blood dominate so profoundly among these populations? The answer may lie in the crucible of natural selection and environmental adaptation. The early inhabitants of the Americas faced harsh conditions, from the frigid tundra of the north to the oxygen-thin altitudes of the Andean highlands. In these extreme environments, type O blood might have offered a crucial edge in survival. The absence of A and B antigens on red blood cells possibly reduced the risk of infectious diseases, which were rampant and often lethal in the pre-contact Americas. Moreover, the adaptability of type O individuals to diverse environments could have further cemented the dominance of this blood type. As indigenous peoples spread across the continent, those with type O blood may have been better equipped to survive and thrive, passing their genetic legacy down through generations. This process of selection, occurring over millennia, would naturally lead to the high prevalence of type O blood observed today among indigenous populations. But the trail of type O blood is not solely a story of survival against the elements and diseases. It is also a narrative of human connectivity and shared heritage. The widespread presence of type O blood among indigenous groups serves as a biological thread linking disparate communities across the continent. This commonality suggests a deep, shared ancestry that predates the modern borders dividing the Americas. Recent advancements in DNA technology have further illuminated the path of type O blood through the ages. Geneticists can now trace lineages and migrations with unprecedented precision, revealing the intricate web of connections among indigenous populations. These studies confirm the ancient origins of type O blood in the Americas and its role as a marker of indigenous heritage. However, the journey of type O blood through history is not merely an academic curiosity. It holds profound implications for health and medicine among indigenous populations. The universal donor status of type O blood means that it plays a crucial role in blood transfusions and emergency medical care. Yet, this same trait also highlights the importance of blood donation within these communities, where type O blood is in high demand, but not always readily available. The Evolutionary Advantage The prevalence of type O blood among indigenous peoples of the Americas, particularly in environments as challenging as high altitudes, is a puzzle that has intrigued scientists for decades. This chapter explores the fascinating theories that suggest type O blood may have conferred evolutionary advantages, enabling ancient populations to not only survive, but thrive in some of the world's most demanding habitats. One of the most compelling aspects of Typo Blood's story is its potential role in high-altitude adaptation. The Andes, stretching along the western edge of South America, have been home to human populations for thousands of years. Living at elevations where oxygen is scarce requires significant physiological adaptations. Interestingly, the prevalence of type O blood is notably high among indigenous populations in these regions, suggesting a possible link to survival in low-oxygen environments. Why would type O blood confer an advantage here? The theory hinges on blood viscosity and oxygen delivery. Type O blood is known to have lower levels of certain clotting factors, potentially resulting in lower blood viscosity, compared to types A, B, or AB. This could theoretically facilitate easier blood flow and more efficient oxygen delivery to tissues under conditions of low atmospheric oxygen, a crucial advantage in high-altitude living. Another angle from which type O blood's evolutionary advantage emerges is disease resistance. Historical data suggests that certain diseases may have affected populations with A or B antigens more severely. For example, some studies indicate that individuals with type O blood have a lower risk of severe malaria compared to those with other blood types, despite malaria not being a primary concern in the pre-Columbian Americas. However, this characteristic hints at a broader principle. The absence of A and B antigens on red blood cells 
might offer some protection against pathogens that exploit these molecules to invade or damage host cells. This theory extends beyond malaria. The general idea is that type O blood could have presented a less favorable environment for a variety of pathogens, reducing morbidity and mortality from infectious diseases. In the context of indigenous American populations, where isolation could have magnified the impact of disease outbreaks, such resistance would be a significant evolutionary boon. Theories on type O blood's advantages also touch upon nutrition and metabolism. Indigenous diets varied widely across the Americas, from the marine-rich diets of the Pacific Northwest to the maize-based diets of Mesoamerica. Some research suggests that blood type may influence digestive efficiency and metabolism, with type O being more suited to certain diets high in protein and fat, typical of hunter-gatherer societies. While these theories are less directly connected to survival in high-altitude environments, they underscore the complex interplay between genetics, environment, and lifestyle in shaping human adaptation. An often overlooked aspect of type O blood's evolutionary advantage is its potential impact on social structures and reproductive success. In tight-knit indigenous communities, where cooperation was essential for survival, the universal donor capability of type O individuals could have had significant social value. In times of injury or childbirth complications, type O individuals could provide life-saving transfusions, indirectly increasing their value within the group and possibly their reproductive success. While each of these theories offers a tantalizing glimpse into the possible advantages of type O blood, it's important to approach them with a degree of caution. The relationship between blood type and evolutionary fitness is complex, and influenced by a myriad of factors including environment pathogens, diet, and social structure. It's likely that the evolutionary advantage of type O blood among indigenous populations of the Americas arises from a combination of these factors rather than a single definitive cause. Nat Geographic Bloodline Mysteries The global distribution of blood types presents a fascinating mosaic of human migration, adaptation, and the mysteries of ancient populations. Among these patterns, the distribution of type O blood, especially its pronounced prevalence in the Americas, stands out as a particularly intriguing enigma. This chapter delves into the geographic spread of blood types, comparing the unique concentration of type O in the Americas with its presence around the world, unraveling the complex tapestry of human history and movement. Blood type distributions vary significantly across the globe, reflecting millennia of human evolution, migration, and interaction. While type O is the most common blood type worldwide, its prevalence is not uniform. In some regions, it dominates, while in others, A, B, or AB types are more common. This variation is a key to unlocking the secrets of ancient human migrations and interactions. In Africa, the cradle of humanity, type O, is highly prevalent, supporting theories that it is the oldest human blood type. Moving into Europe and Asia, the prevalence of type O decreases, with type A becoming more prominent in Western Europe and type B in Central and Eastern Asia. This shift hints at the complex interplay between genetics, environment, and social structures that have shaped human populations over tens of thousands of years. The stark contrast in the prevalence of type O blood in the Americas particularly among indigenous populations compared to other regions, poses compelling questions about ancient migrations and population dynamics. In many indigenous communities, type O reaches frequencies as high as 90 to 100 percent, a stark contrast to the global average of approximately 62 percent. This unique distribution pattern is a crucial piece of the puzzle in understanding the peopling of the Americas. Theories on how Type O became so prevalent in the Americas often center on the Bering Land Bridge, which ancient populations are believed to have crossed during the last Ice Age. These early migrants, carrying predominantly Type O blood, would have been the ancestors of today's indigenous peoples. 
the subsequent isolation of the Americas from Eurasia until the arrival of Europeans could explain the maintenance and increase of type O prevalence due to genetic drift, founder effects, and selective pressures unique to the environment and challenges faced by these populations. The isolation of the Americas for thousands of years before European contact is a key factor in understanding the geographic distribution of blood types. This isolation would have limited the introduction of new genetic variants, including blood types, allowing type O to become more entrenched in the gene pool of indigenous populations. Additionally, the challenges and selective pressures faced by these populations, such as diseases and environmental factors discussed in previous chapters, may have further favored individuals with type O blood, Comparing the Americas' type O prevalence with that of other isolated populations worldwide offers additional insights into the impact of migration and isolation on blood type distribution. For example, some Pacific Islands and remote communities also show high prevalences of certain blood types, reflecting their own unique migration histories and periods of isolation. However, the scale and consistency of type O's dominance in the Americas are unmatched, highlighting the unique historical and prehistorical context of these continents. This distinction raises fascinating questions about the movements of ancient peoples, the routes they traveled, and the survival strategies they employed. Modern Implications of Ancient Blood The journey from ancient migrations to the present day reveals that Type O blood, with its deep historical roots, carries profound implications for modern medicine and healthcare practices. As we have explored the enigmatic origins and evolutionary advantages of type O blood, it becomes clear that this ancient trait affects contemporary medical treatments, emergency response protocols, and the global blood supply. This chapter delves into the critical role of type O blood in modern medical practices, its significance in emergency transfusions, and the implications of its status as a universal donor. In the realm of transfusion medicine, blood type compatibility is paramount. Type O blood's unique properties make it a cornerstone of emergency medical care and surgical procedures. Type O, negative blood in particular, is considered the universal donor type for red blood cells, meaning it can be transfused to patients of any blood type without risk of an adverse reaction. This capability is vital in emergency situations where there may not be time to determine a patient's blood type. Furthermore, type O positive blood, while not universally compatible with all recipients, can be given to any recipient with a positive RH factor, encompassing a significant portion of the population. This flexibility makes type O blood an invaluable resource in saving lives, especially in trauma care and situations where blood loss is critical. The demand for type O blood, especially O negative, is consistently high across the globe. In emergency rooms, during natural disasters, and on the battlefield, Type O negative blood is often the first choice for transfusion when the blood type of the recipient is unknown. This practice underscores the importance of type O blood donors and the constant need to maintain adequate supplies in blood banks and hospitals. However, the universal donor status of type O blood also presents challenges. Because it can be used for patients of any blood type, it is in high demand leading to shortages. Balancing the need to keep sufficient stocks of type O blood against the demands of daily medical procedures and emergencies is an ongoing challenge for healthcare systems worldwide. Beyond transfusion medicine, the prevalence of type O blood has implications for medical and genetic research. Studies have suggested that blood type may influence susceptibility to certain diseases, including cardiovascular issues and infectious diseases. Type O individuals, for example, are thought to have a lower risk of developing coronary heart disease compared to those with other blood types, and they may have different responses to certain pathogens. 
These findings have spurred research into the genetic and molecular mechanisms underlying these associations, potentially leading to personalized medicine approaches that consider blood type as a factor in disease risk assessment and treatment plans. Understanding the interplay between blood type and disease could revolutionize preventive health care and therapeutic strategies. The critical role of type O blood in medical practices also raises ethical and social considerations. Ensuring equitable access to type O blood, especially in regions with lower prevalence of this blood type or in under-resourced health care systems, is a matter of ongoing concern. Efforts to increase blood, donation rates, improve blood storage and distribution technologies, and enhance international cooperation are essential to address these challenges. Moreover, the study of blood type distribution and its implications touches on sensitive issues of identity, ancestry, and population genetics. Research in this area must be conducted with respect for privacy, consent, and the diverse cultural contexts of the populations involved. As we advance into the future, the lessons learned from the ancient origins and modern implications of type O blood will continue to inform transfusion medicine, genetic research, and public health policies. Innovations in synthetic blood products, blood typing technologies, and genetic engineering may offer new solutions to the challenges of blood supply and compatibility. However, the natural properties of type O blood and its role as a universal donor will likely remain a cornerstone of emergency medicine and transfusion practices. DNA and Ancestry, Unraveling Ties In the intricate tapestry of human history, DNA technology has emerged as a transformative tool, unraveling the threads of ancestry and heritage that bind us to our past. As we delve into the connections between blood types and ancient lineages, particularly the prevalence of type O blood among indigenous peoples of the Americas. DNA analysis serves as a beacon, illuminating the paths tread by our ancestors. This chapter explores how DNA technology not only enhances our understanding of human migration and evolution, but also rekindles connections to indigenous roots, as exemplified by the story of Sitting Bull's descendant. Advancements in DNA technology have revolutionized the field of genealogy, enabling individuals to trace their lineage back through generations with unprecedented accuracy. By analyzing markers in our DNA, scientists can infer ancestral origins, migration patterns, and even historical interactions between different populations. For many, this technology has been instrumental in uncovering indigenous heritage, providing a scientific foundation to oral histories and traditional knowledge that have been passed down through generations. The role of DNA in tracing ancestry is particularly poignant for indigenous communities, where oral histories and cultural traditions often contain intrinsic ties to the land and ancestors. DNA testing offers a complementary narrative, one that can affirm and enrich these traditional connections or reveal previously unknown aspects of an individual's heritage. For descendants of indigenous peoples, this can be a powerful experience, bridging the gap between historical records and personal identity. The ability to identify genetic markers specific to indigenous populations of the Americas has profound implications. It allows for a direct connection to the ancient peoples who first inhabited these lands, offering insights into the rich tapestry of cultures and communities that predate European contact. For many, the discovery of indigenous ancestry through DNA is not just a matter of personal curiosity, but a reclaiming of identity and a restoration of bonds that were severed or obscured through centuries of colonization and displacement. This connection is not merely academic. It carries significant cultural, social, and even legal implications. For individuals seeking to understand their place within the broader indigenous community, DNA can provide a tangible link to their ancestral past, fostering a deeper engagement with cultural practices, languages, 
and communal ties. Moreover, for some, establishing indigenous ancestry through DNA analysis can be crucial in accessing resources, rights, and recognition afforded to indigenous peoples. A poignant illustration of DNA technology's power to connect individuals to their indigenous roots is the story of Ernie LaPointe, a direct descendant of the legendary Hunk Papa Lakota leader, Sitting Bull. Through DNA analysis, LaPointe was able to conclusively prove his lineage, affirming a familial connection that had been both a matter of personal identity and historical significance. Sitting Bull, a figure of immense importance in American history, symbolizes the resilience and spirit of the indigenous peoples of the Americas. For LaPointe, the DNA evidence was more than just a scientific validation. It was a reaffirmation of his family's oral traditions and their enduring connection to Sitting Bull. This case exemplifies how DNA technology can bridge the past and present, allowing individuals to reclaim their ancestry and heritage in a way that resonates both personally and collectively. While the ability to trace indigenous ancestry through DNA offers exciting possibilities, it also raises ethical considerations and challenges. Issues of privacy, consent, and the potential misuse of genetic information are paramount. Furthermore, the interpretation of DNA results in the context of cultural and tribal identity is complex. Indigenous identity encompasses more than genetic markers. It involves language, culture, community recognition, and a lived experience that cannot be fully captured by DNA alone. Moreover, the commercialization of DNA testing and ancestry tracing has sparked debates about the commodification of genetic heritage, raising questions about who has the right to access, interpret, and profit from this information. Ensuring that DNA technology serves to empower indigenous peoples and respect their sovereignty and perspectives is crucial. Perspectives is crucial. Perspectives is crucial. Perspectives is crucial.